The island nation of Madagascar, located off the coast of Africa, is home to hundreds of species found nowhere else on Earth, including the ring-tailed lemur, tomato frog, and six of the nine baobab species in the world. Though teeming with abundant life and diversity, many of the people who live here are still under the shadow of animistic beliefs. Rama, a powerful witch doctor, is one of them. Join me as we discover how God is using the radio to transform lives. Hi, I'm Cam Utman, and we are in Madagascar. This is AWR 360. My name is Rama. I am a witch doctor. Ever since I was little, I have been immersed in witchcraft. I could play with lightning, control where it would strike and even prevent thunder from accompanying it. Many seeking treatment for diseases or various spells would come to me and I would heal them. Over time, Rama became a famous witch doctor, astounding the people with his miracles. But one day, everything changed. He found himself suddenly powerless to help his wife Rabin, who had become terminally ill. Rama was desperate. He had tried everything. Normally, he was able to cure anyone he pleased, but this time was different. I tried using all of my witchcraft skills to treat my wife, but her condition only worsened and she eventually lost consciousness. He turned to his friends for help, but all they said was, be strong, there's no cure for your wife, she will die. Radio had always been a cherished pastime for Rama. Years before, he had tuned in to AWR programming to explore various Bible truths, curious to learn about other religions. But now, it all seemed like such a distant memory. <coughs> Rama was beside himself with grief when some words he had heard on the radio passed through his mind. There is a there God, is a God who, can who can solve the problems, problems you face in life. life. He hadn't thought much of it then, but now it offered a ray of hope. One day as he set out to buy groceries at the local market, and seek out a doctor for his wife in the village nearby, he passed through a forest. The impression to pray to the god of the radio station grew stronger. So I stopped, kneeled down, and prayed. O oh God, if you truly exist, please heal my wife. If you will grant her healing, I solemnly pledge that my family and I will dedicate our prayers to you from this day forward. Furthermore, I vow to cleanse my life of the evil magic I've practiced for so long. When he returned from his trip, he was alarmed to find his wife's bed empty. He searched all over the house and called his neighbors to help. Finally, he found out that she had gone to the fields with their daughter. Relieved but very confused, he rushed to the field and was shocked to find his wife in good health. While she appeared thin, he could clearly see an improvement in her condition. In disbelief, he asked her, have you truly recovered? And shared with her that he believed it was his prayer to the God of the radio that brought about her healing. With a heart full of gratitude, Rama extended his thanks to the God he found through Adventist World Radio. He realized that God was more powerful than any magic or witchcraft. He knew what he had to do. 
He gathered all his magic potions, medicines, and charms, and he threw them into the fire. Gone was his former life of superstition and magic. He had now fully surrendered his life to Christ Jesus. The news quickly spread, and fellow witch doctors were amazed as they witnessed the miracle that God had worked for his wife, a healing not by idols or dark magic, but through the divine power of God. This marked the beginning of a new life for me and my family. My wife and I, together, made a commitment to serve God faithfully. And over time, many of the taboos of idolatry no longer had an effect over our lives. But unfortunately, there was no Adventist church nearby that we could attend. Despite facing opposition from the village elders, as well as being isolated in their faith, they remained committed to their newfound faith in God. Rama and Rabin prayed earnestly to find an Adventist church to worship in. While visiting another village, Rama overheard a shopkeeper's conversation about an Adventist named Elise. This immediately caught Rama's attention. After learning where he lived, Rama immediately went to Elise's house to talk. He and his wife, both Adventists, shared that because there was no SDA church nearby, they had been holding Sabbath services in their home. Elise invited Rama and his family to join them for future Sabbath worships. A close friendship was formed, and from then on, they did evangelism together, and the group meeting in their home grew so large that a church was established big enough to hold all the members. As more and more people continued to join their group, it became clear that even this building was not enough. So a second group was formed near Rama's home, and already there are 22 members in attendance. Isn't God amazing? Rama's story reminds us all of the profound reach of Adventist World Radio and the impact that a single life surrendered to Jesus can have to spread the kingdom of God. God is using the radio to penetrate through incredible darkness, illuminating hearts with the light of His truth. Your generous support of AWR is truly making a difference for the kingdom of God. From broadcast to baptism, this is AWR 360.